Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what's meant by endocytosis and exocytosis. In the last few videos we've been looking at how substances move in and out of cells. In most of the cases that we've looked at we've been talking about relatively small molecules or ions. However in many cases cells require larger particles or molecules to pass across the cell membrane. This includes large protein molecules which are exported from cells, for example enzymes and antibodies. Large particles can also pass into cells, for example antigens or bacteria. In all of these cases, the particles or molecules are too large to cross the cell membrane by facilitated diffusion or active transport. So instead, cells use two processes. These are called endocytosis and exocytosis. In both of these processes, large particles or molecules are transferred across the cell membrane. Both endocytosis and exocytosis can transfer a large quantity of material, so scientists refer to these processes as bulk transport. Let's start by looking at endocytosis. In endocytosis, particles or molecules are transported into the cell. This can include large molecules such as proteins, as well as cells such as bacteria, like the ones I'm showing here. In the first stage, the cell membrane folds inwards to form a cavity around the particles. Scientists call this process invagination. The particles to be transported are now in the cavity. Next, the membrane completely encircles the particles to form a vesicle like this. Now the vesicle moves into the cell. At this stage, what takes place depends on the material in the vesicle. For example, bacteria are digested in lysosomes. Other materials can be delivered to different parts of the cell where they're needed. Now there are actually two different types of endocytosis. When solid materials such as bacteria are taken into cells by endocytosis, then scientists call this process phagocytosis. However, endocytosis can be used to transfer fluid into the cell, for example the liquid surrounding the cell. And in this case, scientists refer to this process as pinocytosis. So as we've seen, endocytosis brings material into the cell. In contrast, exocytosis moves material out of the cell. This includes secreted proteins such as hormones and certain enzymes. At the start of exocytosis, these proteins are found in the Golgi apparatus. Here, the proteins are modified before they're secreted. Next, vesicles containing the protein bud off the Golgi apparatus and make their way towards the cell membrane. The vesicles then fuse with the cell membrane and the protein is secreted. Now a key idea you need to understand is that both endocytosis and exocytosis require energy, for example to move vesicles to and from the cell membrane, and this energy is provided by the molecule ATP. Okay, so hopefully now you can describe what's meant by endocytosis and exocytosis. 